Okay, so Be'ezras Hashem, we are continuing with our weekly series of Shirim, the Torah of Recovery with the Light Revealed, where we attempt to illuminate the transient nature and the ever-changing nature of the times with the light of life itself, which is the light of the Torah, and to reveal how the inner interiority of the Torah is not simply something that can be abstracted, translated, and applied to the current moment, but rather that the infinite light of the Torah contains within itself the very fundamental message and medicinal salve necessary to confront the moment. The only problem is that we very often separate the Torah, which is Torah Chaim, which is eternal, from Zman, which is Shinoi and change. The secret what the Balatanya taught us to do is live with the times, draw Chaim, the perpetual eternal meaningfulness of the Torah in accordance with whatever the present moment of history might be, where the reflection of the innermost unchanging points can be reflected ad infinitum, we need to learn to bridge that across the expanse of time after the death of Revelation into the very place where in this moment itself, because no other creature has experienced this moment quite like me in this way, then I am the one who is receiving the Torah and I need to understand the meaningfulness of the Torah in accordance with this moment of bridging the expanse between Chaim, which is Torah's Chaim, eternality, and the Zman, which is the ever-changing terrain in which we live. And it's these times when time and its sting is so intense and where a person feels the the edges of past, present, and future without really being able to grab hold of what exactly is going on, when the hour is late and the marad d'chayva is dachik, and the person who feels, as the Zohar Kaddish says, that they have a, a, a rightful claim against the individual in this world, that they're knocking at the door and there's very few people doing what's necessary, that those who are threshing across the field in the confines of time and cutting away and clearing paths so that a person can find the secret of how the imus of the Torah, the pleasantness of the insight of the Torah that we all have nested deeply within the very inner interiority of our hearts and the secret of the person themselves is the best interpretation of the Torah as the Heilige Mashkiach von Mir, Rav Yeruchim Levavitz would say often, and only we are the machatz de chakla, those in the field who are cutting through the thicket of our own lives to reveal the meaningfulness of the Torah in this very moment itself, in the moment that I find myself in, right here, right now. Va'anin b'shulei hakarma, and we, not only are we the only ones threshing the field, but we're kind of hidden on the side, that each person feels that the Torah is still munach in a place away from them, and that they don't trust their interpretation of p'nimi Torah in accordance with the necessity of the moment in their minds. But the secret of living with the times is realizing and taking upon ourselves the responsibility of being the person who's going to reveal the hidden light of the Torah in this particular moment in my life. Nobody but me can come to reveal the inner healing waters of gan Eden, of the Nahar Hayotzimi Eden, of the perpetual flow of redemptive consciousness that is seeping and dripping into exilic consciousness at every single moment, giving us the perpetual opportunity to ascend all the way up to, up to our higher power and to connect ourselves with ease, with comfort, with connectivity, and then to draw down those irrigating life-giving waters into the dried terrain of the desert-like experience of this worldly experience, and to allow the revelation of the Mayim Chaim to come out of Yushalayim. That's up to us. Each and every one of us have to be mezachich and move the avanim, get rid of the stones that are blocking the natural flow, or to refine the stone to enable it to become a source of natural flow. But each and every one of us is an Evan Hashasiya, and each and every one of us is preparing that Evan Hashasiya to allow the Mayim Chaim that vital water, that irrigation of life that awakens the self at the very core of the soul through the life-giving waters of Pnimiya Satora and Taurus Moshe Rabbeinu and the secret of the Meme Haba'er and the secret of the drawing down of Chidu Torah and insight into a person's life to illuminate every pocket of experience, each and every one of us is responsible. Each and every one of us is responsible for being the individual to respond to the call of the moment, which is to reveal the meaningfulness of the Torah in accordance to my experience right here, right now. The world is at Emas Koyad Chad Samcha. How long will the world titter on the edge of one pillar without the balancing act of the mitkala, of the balance where left, right, and center are revealed to be working towards a singular whole rather than the fragmentation of time, which shows us that left, right, and center are different? How long will the world be unstable in its instability? How long will time feel like it's such a time crunch and that we're always racing against the clock against some impending doom to one degree or another in the moments of our lives, in the moments of reality, whatever it is? whatever the anticipatory dread might be. 
And the secret of the Ijarab is Rabbi Shimon cries out and he says, Ace Lasush Lashem Hipru Sarasacham. It's the time right now, the moment right now is to serve Hashem and to do what Hashem needs us to do. And therefore, I'm going to forget about all of the rules and the regulations that typically prevent me from trusting my intuition as to how to draw the lights of godliness down into this moment right now. And we give ourselves permission, we're mitchazek ourselves, and each and every person says chazak to their friend to reveal that only we have the ability to redeem, redeem the moment through the soothing, comforting waters of Pnimiya Satora, of the Torah HaKadosha, of the light of Moshe Rabbeinu, of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, of all of the tzaddikim, which is the light of recovery, which is the light of attaching ourselves to that light of the higher power and drawing it down in accordance with the receptive tools of our souls to reveal, to become the os in Pnimiya Satora that we are. We are the Zman, the Torah is Chaim, and to live in accordance with the time is to draw the light of the Torah into the Zman itself to reveal my os in Torah, which is my path forward in this world. Each and every person has their own particular nukud in Torah. Each and every person has their own particular point of understanding spirituality in this world that can not be taught from one person to another. It can only be mimicked at best by way of holiness. That Klal Yisar referred to as kikoyf b'fnei ashkina, we're like an ape or aping the shkina kavyachol. We're pretending, we're playing with wooden swords, just as every other nation of the world is considered an ape in relationship to Klal Yisrael because they're imitating us, and so on and so forth in the relative circles and concentric circles of micro and macro influence. And we have to take seriously the ability to mimic what the tzaddikim tell us to do, even if we know we're not there, and to become the Moshe Rabbeinu that we ourselves need. We have to bring Moshe Rabbeinu from our own mind, the very best nukuda, that tamsit sa'inyan, that quintessential drop of spiritual awareness and spiritual consciousness, that moment of conscious contact where I touch that ethereal nukuda pnimius of the lave itself, my osin Torah. And I allow it to irrigate the fields of my life. I allow it to do its work. I trust myself enough. I trust the tzaddikim enough. I trust the Torah enough to rely upon the tzaddikim, to rely upon what our sages have taught us and to find comfort, to believe, to allow ourselves to believe in the goodness that is inherent in every aspect of existence as revealed to us by the tzaddikim asher, kadoishim asher ba'aretz heima va'adiri kolchef sebam, the tzaddikim of the north, of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, of the Arizal, of Rabbi Moshe Kodavaro, the neshama of all of the tzaddikim and the tzaddikim in Yishalayim and the tzaddikim in Europe and the tzaddikim in our hearts and the tzaddik in each and every one of ourselves to connect to the das of the tzaddikim, to believe in the das of the tzaddikim, to have the trust, to be kedai lismoich. Kedai lismoich. Kedai lismoich ha-Rabbi Shimon b'Sha Kedai lismoich ha-Rabbi Shimon b'Sha that it's, it's okay to rely on Rabbi Shimon in a time of urgency, in a time of closeness in a time of concealment in a time of that we have the ability to be masik the highest levels of spirituality specifically from within the confines of confinement and containment and concern and the crouchingness that is necessary the retreat into self and into the safe place in order to pounce out even stronger afterwards with more renewed and invigorated strength and the secret that the Beis HaMikdash being destroyed was in truth the Hiskalis of an Or Ein Sof that was too great for the Beis HaMikdash itself to contain. That HaKadosh Baruch Hu got rid of his Tzimtzum. And it's a Hitznoitzitz. It's not a good thing when it takes place prior to its time. But it's a hint to the fact that in the future HaKadosh Baruch Hu is going to be Mevatal the Tzimtzum with the Tzimtzum immediately without delay whatsoever, breaking the entire concept of duration and time. Take it umiyad mamish, even before I was aware that it didn't happen yet even before I was aware that it didn't happen yet. So quick that I don't remember anything other than the moment of Tekef Umiyad. And the Hamtaka Sat Simsum B'dar Hat Simsum is that within the Churban itself, within the destruction of the Beis HaMikdash, which was a vessel, a lavush, that was capable of holding the light of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, and HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Kav Yachu, decides to reveal more of his infinite light, to create more of the mystery of the Chalal HaPanui and that vacant space and that impossible notion of the Nukud HaPnimis of the Eben HaShasiyah, which is on the one hand the source of Hashem's light in this world, on the other hand the source of Hashem's concealment in this world, that Nukud HaPnimis of Yerushalayim, the Lev of Yerushalayim, Dabru Alev Yerushalayim, of Nachamu Nachamu Ami, the secret of Nachamu Nachamu is Gematria Yitzchak, because Yitzchak is laughing even before the revelation of the Nechama. Like Rabbi Akiva is laughing before the revelation of the Nechama. Because hidden deep within the vestiges of Nechama that we anticipate is ultimately going to be the secret that we're the ones who bring the Nechama. The Makom, the place that you're in right now, 
Take off your shoes, stop trying to walk, be present in the moment, and uncover the light of HaKadosh Baruch Hu in that moment. And that's the sweetening of the destruction of the Beis HaMikdash by realizing that HaKadosh Baruch Hu's light is so big that Binyan Beis HaMikdash can take place anywhere, in every place, in every moment, devoid of any restriction whatsoever, right here, right now, in accordance with my mind, my heart, my body, to the best of my ability, to refine what I can, to accept what I can change, to connect myself to the tzaddikim and to the light of the tzaddikim that rests in their books as much as I can, I can build Beis HaMikdash. And Binyan Beis HaMikdash is the Hisgalus of Das, of being present to myself of being present with the Kaddish Baruch Hu in God consciousness and being aware of the conscious contact, that ethereal, transient sense of connectivity and that weak strength that emerges from the reality of Shavisi Hashem the Nagdi Tamid and the inner quietude and the Hashkata Sanefesh that takes place in times of noise in order to pronounce oneself even more intensely. And when a person builds that Beis HaMikdash B'daisam, Kol Mishiyesh Bodas Ki Lubana Beis HaMikdash, Hashem, that HaKadosh Baruch Hu himself is revealed through the secret of Das, through the secret of the Suda of Lav Yasan. And when we attach ourselves to Binyan Beis HaMikdash right here, right now, we build the Beis HaMikdash in our minds, we accept ourselves with all of our blemishes and all of our deficiencies and all of the complaints and all of the fear and all of this and all the joy and all of the different parts of ourselves, all of the parts of him, all of the various complicated and interconnected, broken half whole pieces that compose each and every Yid and in the unity of each and every Yid is the composure of the singularity of the Jewish people in its perfect brokenness and its broken perfectness. That is the task of the moment, to build Beis HaMikdash where we are, and then from the collection of the Das, of each and every person building Beis HaMikdash, of drawing the Torah of Chaim into their present moment right here, right now, then the actual Beis HaMikdash is built. When we're focusing so much on the moment itself, not focusing on what's going to be in the next moment, about when Mashiach is actually going to come, because we're focused on Binyam Beis HaMikdash right now in our minds, in accordance with what we're capable of doing. So that's the Hesach Adas from actual Mashiach, and that's how Mashiach comes, Behesach Adas. The Hesach Adas of the anticipated arrival of redemption in all of its realness, and all of the halachos of what the Rambam paskins for us, and everything that the Lubavitcher Rebbe, Skusul said about it, and what all of the tzaddikim said about it. That only comes by Hesach Adas, because Hesach Adas, the abandonment of my mind towards that future anticipation, is because I'm centering all of my energy on the right here, right now, to build Beis HaMikdash in accordance with my limited vessels, right here, right now, and in that, I build Beis HaMikdash. And then, Behesach Adas, Mashiach Tzedkenu arrives. That's the secret of Nachamu Nachamu Ami, of drawing down the redemption even though it's still exilic, of drawing down the comfort even though it's still uncomfortable, of drawing down the trust even though we don't know, of drawing down the faith even though we don't feel, and drawing down whatever it is that needs to be drawn down, in spite of the fact that we know we're the ones drawing it down through our own imaginings, and we own that, and we believe that Nishma Yisrael is the highest thing in the world, and that the imaginings and the thoughts and the heart pull and the developmental knowledge and orientation of focused mindfulness on that which is good in this moment, on the Nakuda Tova in this moment, of the Lev Yerushalayim in this moment, that we bring Mashiach Mamish. And one of the places that this is revealed, every every Pasuk of the Torah is living with the time. Every Pasuk of the Torah can be Machai Mesim. Every Pasuk of the Torah can give a person a, a full unadulterated perspective of what the moment is, how the moment got to be the way it is, and what is needed for the next stage of the moment. Every Pasuk has the ability, every word has the ability, every letter has the ability of revealing that Nakuda, of how to unify time in the secret of Nitzchias, which doesn't negate time, but rather reveals the redemption of time itself, which is the Via Samashiach. And one of the places that this radical orientation that we can build Beis HaMikdash in our minds is, is with regards to Parshas Masay. These are the journeys of Klai Yisrael. A person's entire life is modeled around these 42 journeys of Klai Yisrael in their wayward wandering in the Midbar. As the Hei Magad of Mezrich says in the name of his Rabbi, the Baal Shem Tov HaKadosh, and all of the tzaddikim spoke about this, in particular the Hei Base Avram, the Base Avram, the original Slanim Rebbe, in his remarkable, impossibly beautiful, redemptive Torah, especially in his Sefer Chesed Lavram, as we're going to be discussing in the future, he takes each and every one of these Membez Masos and he sees where it is expressed in the heart of each and every person. These journeys, this up and down, building and breaking, putting up and taking down, developing an idea, the idea falling apart, developing a sense, the sense falling apart, hoping and despair, despair and hope, 
connection, disconnection, all of the various ups and downs and fluid changes that compose and comprise and populate moment to moment experience in the Heichal Hagvanim Hamishtanim in this mixed up, muddled up, shook up world that we find ourselves in, Bein HaMitzarim. Every journey that a person takes, every moment and journeying of the mind, of Baderech, of being on the path as, as, as Rav Judah Michel Shlita really, really, really brings down in his, uh, in his magnificent Sefer, Baderech. But that every step of the way, every step of the way is, is a journey and it has a beginning and a middle and an end. And in accordance with our attention and our attunement to it, we can extend the time period of it and dig. It doesn't mean that the thing has to take longer. It just means that we slow down our perception of the moment so that we see our world and our days. And even in the Chaye Sha'a and the transiency of each and every moment prior to redemption, we can uncover the secret of Chaye Oilam, which is the light of the Torah. This is what Rabbi Nachman meant to one degree of transforming our Torah. Torah into tefillah. The Torah is Chaye Oilam. The Torah is the Chaye HaChayim, the eternality of all things. Tefillah is where I find myself in the moment, my particular need in accordance with my particular deficiency and my struggle in this moment. That's what tefillah is. But to draw the Torah into tefillah is to draw Chaye Oilam of Nitzchias into Chaye Shah and transiency of tefillah and to reveal that within the Chaye Shah itself, within the moment-to-moment -moment survival technique that we so often need in moments of concealment and concealment upon concealment, v'chule v'chule, so in those places, we draw down Nitzchias into Zman and we're Megalazine on the Nitzchias of Zman itself, which is the secret of the Seder Hazmanim, which is the blind beggar of Rabbi Nachman's story, who's also connected to the seventh beggar who has not yet arrived and who will arrive immediately soon, Bezras Hashem. That secret of Mashiach bin David is completely dependent upon an orientation towards time in the sense that I'm so old that I'm so young, I remember everything and nothing at the same time. I'm so old that I remember nothing. Because when a person breaks free from the confines of past, present, and future and descends down into the moment itself, so as to eventually come out and redeem past, present, and future, which is actual Mashiach, but the only way to bring actual historical Mashiach is by descending down into that place prior to time and the Eden Hanashamos. In that place of Adayin, Adayin, Aden is Adayin, it's not yet because it's still before. It's the secret of Teke Fumiyan Mamish, going back to a place beyond time. In that place of Nitzchias, in this moment right now, if I redeem and I uncover the value of each Maso, and I understand the value of each and every process, I have the ability of redeeming my Maso's. I have the ability of redeeming my journeys. And I apologize for the verbosity of what I'm saying. I do, it's not the typical model of the uh, of the recovery shear, but by Ezra Sashem we'll be able to get to the place that we want to get to. So one of the places, one of the places that Rabbi Nachman reveals the, the beauty and the paradoxical dance of his Torah is when it comes to the nature of these Masaos. What are these journeys? What are these ups and downs that compose each and every person's life? Those lights of Bina that is the question of Shaila Vachuva, of questioning and answering and more questioning and more answering, and sometimes coming to a place of Teku and Tishbi Yavo Vyataritz Kushus Vyabayos, of learning to live with unanswerable questions, of learning to anticipate and answer, and to journey on in spite of the fact that the destination of the previous journey is not clear. That secret of Elu Maase B'nai Yisrael, the secret of Bina, the changes of every person's life, in one place in Lakuta Maran, in the first volume of Lakuta Maran, in the 40th teaching. So we have a teaching from Ibn Nachman that says as follows. Isa Ba'asar Ma'amaros, it's written in the Asar Ma'amaros of the Ramami Pano, the Helegar Ramami Pano, Ziknei HaMekubalim. Elu Maase B'nai Yisrael, these are the journeys of B'nai Yisrael. Bishvil Shachatu Be'elu Elikach Yisrael. Because B'nai Yisrael sinned by the Chet Egel. And again, by the sin of Yeravim ben Nevat afterwards. So in as a result of saying, these are your God, O Israel, of identification with something that is not God as being the higher power. So we need to rectify it by going on these journeys. That the journey, the traveling is a rectification, is needed as a result of the chait of Avodazara that we engaged. Rabbi Nachman says, and it seems from this perspective, that the journey is a negative thing. It's a, it's a punishment that is placed upon us. The ever-changing nature of our lives is a punishment that's placed upon us as a result of having messed up, very similar to Kayan's condition of wandering to and fro in the land and never finding comfort because HaKadosh Baruch Hu gave him the gift of anxiety. He was paras mesach mavdil b'moichei shal Kayan, as the Kashan Samagat said. Hashem extended a dividing partition in his mind that prevented him from finding Yishev Adas. And he was in a state of Bahala all the time, so it's a punishment. And so too here it sees the need to wander, the need to travel from place to place in one's mind. 
is a punishment. Nimsa kol is shala adam, all of the journeys that a person goes through, who bishvil kilkul ha'amuna is as a result of not having proper faith. And again, the journey here, we're not talking about actual journeys, although the actual journeying and the walking and the strolling and the walking and back and forth and swaying in one's house are all fundamentally significant and ontologically valuable performative elements of what it means to be a human being, especially dancing and the secret of dancing that has not yet to be revealed fully, only a little bit by the Shpalu Zayda and the secret of Hopkasok, of dancing our enemies to death. So... The way we're looking at it is not actually journeying, it's not actually walking, but rather it's the journeys that a person goes through in their minds as well. The journeys that a person goes through from the moment that they wake up to the moment that lunchtime hits and from lunchtime to the moment of going to sleep, a person has journeyed across the world. Each person has to confirm, I've been all around the world today, Rabbanu Shalalim, in my mind, everywhere. Frustrations, resentments, anxieties, concerns, joys, excitements, expectations, excitations, hopes, Dreams, all of the movement and the places of the mind, that's what we're talking about. So it seems that these journeys are a result of a kilkul ha'amuna. Because we didn't have the proper faith, we're forced to journey. The same avodazara that we had by the Chita Egel, which showed that we didn't have the proper faith in HaKadosh Baruch Hu. As a result, we have to go and journey to account for our sin. Because if a person had true faith, and a person was truly aware of God's presence in their lives, HaKadosh Baruch Hu could provide me with everything that I actually need right here in this moment. If a person knew that, nobody would go anywhere. Nobody would have to move anywhere. Because the Nesia is as a result of not having proper faith. The aspect of Avodah Zarah. So Rabbi Nachman is saying something incredible here. Rabbi Nachman is saying that because we didn't have the proper faith, because we didn't have the proper attunement and connectivity to the ever-present nature of a Kaddish Baruch Hu's light in our lives at every single moment. So as a result of that, a person feels that they need to wander. And the wandering is indicative and reflective, ultimately, of that kilkul of faith. Of that kilkul of faith. And that kilkul of faith is because I didn't believe that I had whatever I needed here. I didn't believe that this moment was enough. I didn't believe that I could build Beis HaMikdash in this moment. I didn't believe that I was strong enough to be able to do it. I didn't believe that I had the ability to do it. Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I just want to look. I'm sorry. There's another Torah from Rabbi Nachman on the same idea that I'm using to, to reflect, to reflect on the distinction. And um, it's lost. I mean, I'm lost. I don't I don't have the source. So I want to take a moment to just find it. So I'm looking at the Gvaldika Mafteach, really the only Mafteach that exists in the old Lukut Marans from Rav Kenig, Sklusia Ganalinu, whose yard site was uh, was this week, one of the, the biggest Mashbiye Breslov and Mashbiye Kabbalah in um really in history, and, and a mind a, a mind like no other. Give me a second, Favra. So we see again, just to reiterate, the first understanding of Rabbi Nachman of the need to travel and these Masaos of Elamase are that they're an unfortunate result of not having proper faith. And therefore, I have to go through them as a punishment of sorts until I can properly understand that I don't need to travel anywhere and that HaKadosh Baruch Hu is found everywhere and that all I need to do is have the proper emuna in HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Amazing. Give me one more second, Chavra, and then I'm going to give up on this for a second. Baruch Hashem, what I thought. Samach Beis in the second volume of Lukut Amaran. So the teaching that we just saw about the Kilkul Ha'emunah, about the fact that traveling and the need to travel and these masos and the up and down nature of every human being's life is an unfortunate consequence of not having the proper orientation to faith. And all of the changes that we go through and all of the ups and downs are an unfortunate condition of being human, but they do not represent the ideal state of things. And halavai, a person should be able to be wherever they are in that moment itself without having to deviate and to live in a world of Gan Eden, without having to descend down into the other parts of the world. So that's one way of looking at these masos. But Zakhtar bin Nachman in Lukut Amaran Tenyana, in Eilamas Ebene Yisrael, in Torah Samach Beis, Isa be Medrash, Shemas Ebene Yisrael, Dahinu Hanesios, Shebene Yisrael, Noisim Mimakum Lamakum, the movement from one place to another that each and every Jewish person goes through, Heim Machaprim Al Eila Elikacha Yisrael, they get rid of the element of 
they get rid of the element of Avodah And as long as there's Avodah in the world, there's anger in the world. And as long as there's anger in the world, there's a lack of Rachmanas in the world. And in order to awaken HaKadosh Baruch Hu's Rachmanas in the world, we have to go on these journeys. It's the secret of Kel Shakai, that HaKadosh Baruch Hu gives over to Klai Yisrael the ability to want the Rachamim in the way that we want it. So on the one hand, we see, Rabbi Nachman says, that the need for journeys back and forth, to and fro, up and down, and as the way we're describing it is the back and forth in our minds on the regular basis. On the one hand, it's symptomatic of a problem, that I'm not present enough, that I'm not present enough where I need to be. And on the other hand, the need to journey is the way of being Me'orer Rachamim on Klai Yisrael, of being Me'orer Rachamim on Klai Yisrael, that the Masos were about revealing Rachamim Rabbim, that the Masos, Eilem Masiv and Yisrael, were coming to reveal the secret of HaKadosh Baruch Hu's Rachamim Rabbim for Klai Yisrael. And so how could it be that on one hand, the need to travel is representative of the failure to be present, yet the need to travel, on the other hand, is the attempt to regain access to presence? On the one hand, the need to back and forth, change up and down, to forget and remember, put myself on, take myself back off, have hope, lose hope, have hope, lose hope, orient myself, disorientation, etc., 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 etc. All of the hechal ha'gvanim ha'mishtanim, on the one hand, it's because I don't have the strength to be present. But on the other hand, the only way that I'll ever learn how to be present is through the journeys themselves. And herein lies the secret of Elu Maase B'nei Yisrael, that it's specifically in the masaos that we go through, in the changes that we go through, when we go through day-to-day -day changes, moment-to-moment -moment changes, the journeying back and forth, and the feeling that I'm not the person I was a moment before, and I'm not the person in the next moment that I was the moment before, and we allow ourselves to fall into this trap of, of not feeling good about ourselves, or not feeling strong about ourselves, or not believing that we have the capacity to, to build base on mikdash, to create a makom because I have no makom, in truth, what the second teaching of the Kutamaran is teaching us is that the very tarrying around and the wandering around in search for a makom is the makom. Hine makom iti. That the makom is with you. The makom is me wherever you draw me in. And if a person travels with the awareness that in every moment that I go back and forth in my mind, I'm with HaKadosh Baruch Hu, even though I'm still traveling back and forth, when I'm able to look at the previous experience as also my relationship with HaKadosh Baruch Hu, that is going to lead me to my new revelation of a relationship with HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And in the light of my new relationship with HaKadosh Baruch Hu, the previous moment's relationship with HaKadosh Baruch Hu will be revealed to have not even been the beginning of a relationship, but not devaluing the previous moment as a result of not being good enough, but rather valuing it in the sense that it brought about the next moment itself, which would have been impossible without the previous moment. The secret of the Shir Pashat, Kaful Meshulash Merubah. The shear of redemption is the revelation that it's one, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, four. Aleph, Aleph, Beis, Aleph, Beis, Gimel, Aleph, Beis, Gimel, Dalid. That the next step is always built upon the previous step and in the secret of incremental growth. That's the tikkun of the Masaos. Of every Maase, every one of these journeys is going to reveal the Chachma Shebechodavar. That all of these movements and changes of Bina is only a way of going back in to the Achdus and the Makom, Hine Makom of Chachma, where I don't have to move anywhere whatsoever. But if I see every momentary deviation and detour in my life as part and parcel of a Kaddish Baruch Hu's plan that is simply bringing me back to a new place. So I reveal emuna within the journey itself, which is where the Avodah Zarah was found in the previous moment. So it's not whether I'm in a masa or I'm not in a masa. A person is always journeying in this world. The soul is in transit. The soul is perpetually in transit from the beginning of the expanses of history down towards the end of history. Adam, David, Mashiach. Klai Yisrael were all contained in Adam HaRishon, where we all have an akuda of David HaMelech in us. And it's specifically with the encounter of that place of Davar Melech with us, which is the ability to realize the Rabbi Nishlaylam, I am not going to stop searching for your Binyan Beis HaMikdash. I am not going to stop living my life. I'm never going to stop living my life wanting to build your Beis HaMikdash. But Davar Melech didn't build Beis HaMikdash. He spent his entire life searching for Beis HaMikdash. But because he spent his entire life searching for Beis HaMikdash, David HaMelech had something even more powerful, was that every moment of his life was oriented to Beis HaMikdash. He built Beis HaMikdash where he was. Because he didn't have Beis HaMikdash, he was able to build Beis HaMikdash when he was, where he was. And then, as a result of forgetting about the actual Binyan, it took place, Behesach 
So we can be like David and we can bring out the Nekudah Mashiach in us when we value every step of our journey as significant and having a Nekudah Tova that needs to be uncovered so that we uncover the Reach Tov of Klai Yisrael, the Nekudah Tovas of Klai Yisrael. The Mataoz is only there to be Ma'orer, the Reach Nichoyach of Klai Yisrael. To be Megala Zayin on the Simchas of the Katoiras, which is Megala, that even the Chelbana, even the lowest element of Nekudah Yisrael, can do something that the highest element of Kedusha Yisrael can't do. The secret scent of the Korbanos of the Beis Mikdash, the scent that ascends from the Besume Bepurya. There's an intoxication that's not by way of wine or intoxicants, Chas V'Shalom. It's an intoxication of the bewilderment of existence. It's the shikhras on the chitzonius, when things are so midbubal that a person doesn't know, up, down, right, left. And in that place to enter into the, the moichin of drawing down a place into the journey itself, of making a space within the journeying. And then the journey becomes a dance. All of the walking, all of the movement, walking is separation of the legs from a position of standing, but it's for the sake of ascending upwards, the secret of being a holich, the secret of being a person who walks, the secret of being higher than the malachim. And then that walk is going to be revealed to become the dance that the masaos, the 42 masaos of Klai Yisrael, when we orient ourselves to the fact that every point of the process is part and parcel of the unfolding story of my life, which is composed of the 42 journeys and not in spite of the 42 journeys. The first position where the masaos, the travel, is reminding me of my failure of not being present is where I see each and every journey as a failed attempt of getting to where I need to be. And therefore, I remind myself of how bad I am. And I remind myself of how incapable I am of building Beis HaMikdash. And pour me, pour me another drink. And that self-loathing, which sometimes feels like a warm mikvah, where a person just wants to rest there because it takes away the responsibility of spiritual activism. But the Eilim Masaos B'nai Yisrael and the Tikkun of Emunah within the Masaos and the Shem Mem Beis, which is Megala the Nun Shari Bina, is that each and every Masa, every step that I go, I'm walking to Eretz Yisrael. Kol makom shani holech, ani holech, rakel Eretz Yisrael. Every place that David HaMelech was walking, he was dancing. The deviations are part of the destination as long as we properly understand the difference between a deviation and a destination. But the revelation of a destination is not the undoing of deviation, God forbid. The entirety of the Gemara is built of Havamina and Mastana. It's Havamina and Mastana. Both are fundamental. Mashiach ben Yosef, Mashiach ben David. The ups and the downs. The wandering and the focused presence. This is the secret of transforming our wandering into the dance of Mashiach Tzidkenu. Into the dance of the Shpalar Zeda when there was a Yid who was hidden in a boar. There was a Yid. The Cossacks, Yimach Shemam, wanted to punish a Jew. They wanted to punish a, a weak, scared, bothered, uncomfortable neshama in a world where it's unclear what the next step is going to reveal. And what they did was they placed this Jew in a boar. They placed this Jew in a pit. And they re removed food from him. They fasted him for three days, just as it was before Mordechai and Esther. And the destruction of our enemies and Haman Arasha and, and all of his ilk and all of the all of the elements of the snake. And what the deal was, was they were going to take this Jew that they just starved for three days. And they were going to say to this Jew that if you can outdance this Cossack, if you can outdance this Cossack, then you're free. If you can, if you can keep up with this Cossack, if you can keep up with the dance of the Cossack, you'll be set free. If you can overtake the dance of the Cossack, if you can overtake the dance of the Cossack, then you get to kill the Cossack yourself. But if you get outdanced by the Cossack, then that's your life. And so the Shpalar Zayda was wandering in his own world of wandering at that point, on the Membe's Masa'os, until he arrived in his final Masa'a, which was going to be the beginning of Rabbi Nachman's Masa'a to Eretz Yisrael, in the secret of Kol Makam Shani Olech, Ani Olech Rakhla Eretz Yisrael. And the Olyanavi comes to the Shpalar Zayda. All the Shpalar Zayda cared about was helping Yidin. The only thing the Shpalar Zayda cared about was helping Yidin and bringing down Chesed and Racham and Rabin for Yidin. And Mashiach said, uh, and Eliyahu Navi said, Shpalar Zayda, Arya Leib, Yehuda Leib, depending, it's the Lion of Israel. You need to take the place of this Yid. This Yid's going to die. The Cossack is a trained dancer. It's, uh, it, it's dead from the start. It's dead from the start. You need to take his place. Shpalar Seyda says, Avada, I'm going to take his place. Avada, I'll take his place, but I don't know how to dance. Ah, I forgot to mention a fundamental piece of the story, which is that 
what they were going to make this Jew do was dress in a bear costume. Forgot that part. That this Jew, this this frail Jew, after fasting for three days, was going to have to don a heavy bear costume and try and outdance or keep up with this trained dancer of a Cossack in his intoxicated state. And so the Shabbat says, this is Avad, I'll take his place. Eliyahu Navi, Avad, I'll take his place, but I don't know how to dance. So Eliyahu Navi says, don't worry, I'm going to come and help you dance. And Eliyahu Navi came to the Shabbat Zayda and taught him how to dance, taught him the secret of dancing. As it's known in the life of the Shabbat Zayda, by Kabbalah Shabbos, by Boi Kala, Boi Kala, and before Marev and Kabbalah Shabbos, the dance of the Shabbat Zayda was something that the tzaddikim came from around the world to see. From around the world to see. The dance, this cerebral, heartful, physical expression of dancing, the secret of the Batler Hashvi'i, the dance of Mashiach Tzidkenu, the dance that is hidden within each and every Torah of, of the life-giving Torahs of Nachon of Chachma. And ultimately, Ilyonavi teaches the Shbala Zeta how to dance. And at night, under the cover of night, the Shbala Zeta descends down into this pit. He whispers to the Seed, you escape, you escape, I'm going to take your place. They won't recognize in the dark, and I'll wear this bear costume, and I'll take it from here. The Jew escapes. Yosef leaves the boar. Mashiach ben Yosef is saved. Right, that element of Klai Yisrael is saved. That nakuda of the heart, the the deviations are saved, and they're shown to be relevant. And every part of our story is revealed to be significant. Even the person who was in the boar and had to be saved from the boar. And into the pub comes the Shpalazeda donned in a bear costume, in a bear costume. And they begin to dance, and the Cossack dances dance. And the starving Jew in the bear costume, the Shpalazeda, having learned the secret of dancing from Elio Anavi, starts to dance gracefully, slowly and gracefully, to the astonishment of people. And continues going this way. Moment by moment, hour by hour, the Shpalazeda out dancing this Cossack, to the point that not only did the dancing bear, did the Shpalazeda in his bear costume, not only did he keep up with this Cossack, but he overcame the Cossack. He overcame the Cossack and he danced his way into redemption. And from here we have the song, Hop Kasok, which the Lubavitcher Rebbe and the Lubavitcher Tzadikim brought out in the Koyach of that song of Hop Kasok, Hop Kasok. The secret of Klai Yisrael taking revenge over their enemies and destroying their enemies through dancing. And again, the way the story ends is either that the Shpel Zeta danced until the Cossack died completely, or that the Shpelah Zeta danced until the Cossack understood, and both are true, and both are needed, and both are emes la miso, and both are elu, elu diver lekem chayim, in whatever way HaKadosh Baruch Hu decides to bring about redemption. But the secret of this dance, the secret of the dancing Shpelah Zeta, the secret of the putting our feet onto the ground, learning from Elio Navi how to dance in a pit, how to dance for our lives, how to dance for the sake of our lives in each and every moment, that to not dance, to not utilize the process of walking and the fact that I have to journey from one place to another in this world, I have to learn how to transform it into a dance. I have to learn how to learn the secret of dancing in the air. Heter nedar and parech ba'avir, the secret of neder, which is the beginning of Parshas Matos, which is the secret of the transitions from Bina to Chachma, Chachma to Bina, all of the changes and the ups and the downs of, of taking more upon myself, taking less upon myself. So we're told that the annulment of those nadarim are parech ba'avir, they, they float in the air. We also know from Chazal that anybody who takes a neder in the shame of HaKadosh Baruch Hu is nishba b'chaya chayim. They're drawing down the light of Ruchnias into their minds to learn how to journey in our thoughts properly for the sake of connecting to Hashem. And what does it mean that the heter to nadarim, the way of undoing and refining this space of the neder, of the nundar, of the world of Bina, and all of the journeying, and the journeying of the mind, and the journeying of the machshavos, what does it mean that the heter, the opening of it, is parayach ba'avir? So there's another idea of parayach ba'avir, of a migdal ha-parayach ba'avir. As Tzadok HaKohen Melablin describes, it's the secret of the Yid who has to learn how to live in the sky, how to dance in the sky. Dancing is realizing that there's no place on the ground for me to place two feet. Avada, every place that I walk, I walk to Eretz Yisrael. But Eretz Yisrael is perpetually being nikna through the process of halicha. A person is perpetually coming to reveal more and more of the makom of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And therefore, the dancing in the air is the perpetual condition of what it means to be a Jew who is trying to build Beis HaMikdash in our minds. To banil and Beis Avir Da'almu. As the Sabbath de Beis came along to the Tzadikim and they wanted to make fun of the, the Jewish illogic and the paradox of Jewish thinking at the innermost Nukud of it. And they said, Banil and Beis Avir Da'almu, build for me a house in the middle of the sky. And he says, fine. He said, a name of a Kaddish Baruch when he ascended into the middle of the sky. And he asked for them to send up tools. 
And that's the sukkah, and that's the secret of transiency. But as we're discussing now, Banalan Besa Bavir the Alma means build the Besa Mikdash Ba Avir the Alma. The Olam is Gamha Oilam Nasam Bilvecha, and the Oilam is a person's mind. Banalan Besa Ba Avir the Alma and the secret of the Avir Dachi and that refinement of, of insight and thought and the presencing of mind and the Nikud of Das of building my Besa Mikdash right here, right now, of valuing each and every deviation and moment of my thinking and my struggle and this, that, or the other thing that seems to bring me off to the center, off from the center, only to bring me back to the center in the secret of the Tesefes Kishut, let me be aware that I can build Besa Mikdash right here, right now. And that if I'm wandering in the desert and I don't know when Shabbos is, I can say it's Shabbos right now, and that's the Metzias. And only through that do we have the ability to build the real Beis HaMikdash, to have HaKadosh Baruch Hu send down the Beis HaMikdash. From within the confinement itself, from within the, the sense of being chased. The being chased itself is the opportunity to squeeze the moment of constriction to the point that it secretes the quintessential drop of Amuna that remains at every single moment. The Etzem Haluz of the Neshama. And in that way we'll be Zoycha to the secret of Nachamu, Nachamu, Ami, to the secret of Yitzchak Avinu, to the secret of what Rabbi Nachman describes, Nachamu, Nachamu, Ami, is ultimately about tapping into the Etzam Haluz, tapping into the secret of Koisel Ma'aravi, tapping into what Rav Avram ben Rav Nachman writes in Chachma Vetvuna, that to a certain degree the Koisel Ma'aravi in Golus has an even stronger Kedusha on a certain level than the Beis HaMikdash in its Binyan, because it's the secret of the Etzam Haluz and the irreducible light of HaKadosh Baruch Hu that exists at every journey of a person's life, and finding Beis HaMikdash wherever I am. And to be zoichet, to kol reit fea, his sigua bena mitzarim, when I find myself in the dire straits and we find ourselves struggling with the narrative and find ourselves forgetting what came before and what's going to come next, we remind ourselves the freedom of being the architects of our own sipurim isios, of uncovering the narrative structure, of telling our stories to ourselves differently to wake ourselves up and to be megala zayin and megalas esther and from the astara, shabatoich astara, will be megala and or mufla remala in the secret of nachamu, nachamu ami, the secret of yitzchak, the secret of the gematria, of chakak, of an engraving of the osios, of the chakika, the writing that takes place by way of the engraving of moving inwards for the sake of revealing, to reveal the secret of mem and samech, b'nei seim oimdim, in the secret of the Mem and the Samech, the circular point that allows its middle point to maintain its existence in spite of the fact that it's not supported on anything. Because it goes from one side to the next. So how can you have a Mem and a Samech? How can you have circular empty letters in a stone that is carved one way to another? Zakta Torah Kadosha, it's a nace. Because that's the secret of the inner point being maintained. The center does hold. Wherever a person wanders, the center does hold, specifically when anarchy is unleashed upon the world, specifically in the Memmez Masos, a person has the ability of connecting themselves to the one true thing that every Masa is telling me, which is Anna Bekoyach Gdula Simincha Tatir Tzrura, Kabel Rinas Amcha Sagvenu Tarinu Noira, Nagibor Dorshe Chudcha Kivavat Shamrem, Barchem Tarim Rachmem Sitkoscha Tamid Gamlem, Chasin Kodesh Brov Tufcha Nahala the Secha, Yochid Geela Amecha Pene Zochri Kedusha Secha, Shavasenu Kabel Ushmatza Akasenu Yodea Sa. To reveal the ability to go from one place to the next, to uncover that innermost point of the Mem and the Samech, which is Chachma and Bina, which is the opposites of our lives, which coincide, which is the unity of these two ways of looking at the journey, of living in the journey and finding faith within the journey and uncovering the secret that every place that I walk, I'm going just to Eretz Yisrael. I'm walking towards Gula perpetually. I'm dancing towards Gula. We're dancing towards Gula. So the secret of the Butler Hashvi who will come down to teach us the dance of David Malka Meshicha that was Meraki Bechol Oz Lefnei Hashem in the secret of Atischok Lemacharon in the secret of emptying ourselves out to the point that I don't care whatsoever. I'm going to dance for HaKadosh Baruch Hu in the secret of the emuna that rests upon nothingness, in the secret of the pri of flying in the sky and being able to uncover the light of connectivity, even when we don't seem to have the basis for it. Be'ezrus Hashem.